Hello students, how are you all? I hope you are fit and fine at your home. Today we are going to study Environmental Studies Part 1 Standard 5. So today we are going to study the rest part of the chapter that is fourth one Environmental Balance. Here today we are going to study the most important food and food chains that is plants and environmental balance. So let's get started. Every living thing gets its food from the environment. Many animals in the environment eat only plants. Yes student. The animals that eat only plants are called herbivorous. Okay student. For example, deer, grasshoppers, rabbits, are all the examples of herbivorous. Okay, student. Other animals eat the animals that live on plants. Yes, do you know, student, what do we call them? Yes, we call them carnivorous. For example, lions, tigers, these are vertebrates, snakes, and sharks, too. Okay, these are called as carnivorous. Okay, student, have you understood now? Very good. But plants make their own food in the presence of sunlight using water and the carbon dioxide from the air. It means that plants are the main support of every food chain. Yes, have you understood, student? Here, plants are the main source or support of every food chain because some of the animals eat plants and the other animals eat the animals that eat plants. It means here the common factor is plant. So here plant is the main support of every food chain. Okay, student, have you understood? Now we will study environmental balance. Okay, students, there are many food chains in our environment because of these food chains every living things gets the food it needs and therefore continues to live microorganisms living in the soil help the process of decomposition of plant residue dead animals excreta etc as a result Substances that help the growth of plants are formed and get added to the soil. Plants use them for their growth. Now student, do you know which substances are added to the soil? Yes, plants require several different chemical elements in order to thrive. Thrive means what? To grow. Oxygen, carbon and hydrogen are found in water and air. Secondary, nutrients that plants need include magnesium, calcium, sulfur. Beyond that, plants also need such micronutrients as zinc, copper, manganese, cobalt, iron, boron. Okay, student. So, all these substances added to the soil during the process of decomposition and the plants use them for their own growth. Okay, student, have you understood now? Thus, plants use substances in the soil for their growth and when plants and animals die, the decomposition of their remains adds these substances to the soil once again. This is an important cycle in the environment. Okay, student, have you understood? Now, again, one more important thing we are going to study that is 
living things get continuous supply of water because of the water cycle. Yes, student, do you know about water cycle? Yeah, how do we get water or rain? Yeah, after rainfall, water get deposited in streams, rivers, seas, etc. And when the water get heated, it turned into vapors. Vapors go up in the sky and it turns into the clouds and because of condensation we see there is rainfall okay rainfall okay and we get water from rainfall so this is called as water cycle so student we have studied here about the water cycle now living things use oxygen from the air for breathing and give out carbon dioxide gas. Plants use the carbon dioxide from the air for making their food. Oxygen is given out in the process and gets added to the air again. This is too is a cycle in nature. This is also an important cycle in our nature. There are several other such cycles in nature. Thus, there is interaction amongst living things and between living and non-living things in nature. The interactions go on continuously. This helps to maintain the food chain in the environment. When the various cycles in the environment go on uninterrupted, environmental balance gets maintained okay student have you understood now environmental balance how to maintain the environmental balance okay student so such kind of lots of chains cycles we can see in our environment if these cycles or chains goes on continuously without any problem, without any interruption, then there can be balance in our environment and we can live properly in our environment. Okay, student, have you understood this much? Very good. So, here we have completed the fourth chapter that is environmental balance. In this chapter, we have studied first biodiversity the environment, then we have studied the food chain and the food web. After that, we have studied about the most important food in food chains that is plants and environmental balance. Okay, student? Okay. If you have liked this video, like it, share it to your friends, comment below the video subscribe it and do not forget to press the bell icon so that you will get current notification of new videos thank you be connected